Welcome to the Manifesting Doll Podcast. I'm Barbara Orban from No Diet Babe. I'm a spiritual mindset coach and weight loss expert. If you are a spiritual babe wanting to up-level your life around your body, health, wellness, spirituality, law of attraction and manifestation, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to give you the tools, teachings, and strategies to manifest the body and life of your dreams. As spiritual babes, we know to focus on love as opposed to fear. So get ready to learn how to implement spiritual teachings to weight loss, wellness, and your daily life coming from a place of love and abundance. This is a celebration of how we can shift our inner perception of ourselves and watch our outer selves shift you can become the best version of yourself and I'm here to help. So let's get started. Hey babes, welcome to the Manifesting Doll podcast. I'm Barbara Orban from NoDietBabe.com and welcome to today's episode. I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, It's been a while since I've recorded a podcast episode, but here I am and today I'm going to be talking about Um, it's not just about losing the weight, but it's about losing the lifestyle that got you there. And interesting enough, I had, I posted a quote about that the other day. So the quote was something along the lines of that, like, it's not just about losing the weight, it's about losing the lifestyle that got you there. And somebody, people get triggered about my stuff all the freaking time, okay, because they don't fully understand what it is that I'm here to teach and that's okay. I try to forgive them and see it from their point of view. At the same time, I get triggered myself because I get really upset when people want to spread hate rather than love. And a lot of the time, the people commenting aren't really doing much themselves to educate others or they don't have a social media account themselves that's um, really the purpose is to spread um, a good message regardless of you know what their beliefs are we can have different beliefs but what I'm trying to say is like what I'm noticing is that the people who comment nasty things or hate are generally not even in the space of having followers on social media or understand what it's like to put yourself out there and actually spread what your own journey has been, to spread what has worked for you, to spread what your beliefs are, right? And to understand that there's no one right way for everybody to be. There is just not. Like childhood consciousness is... I view the world in a certain way and everybody else should view the world the same way and my way is right and anything else is wrong and everyone else is bad. And I am guilty of viewing (laughs) others that way, like kind of like very self-righteous. I've realized through my work of codependency that I I am that person, like that person is re- is reflecting back to me <laughs> what I am too, like what I've been my whole life, right? So there's a learning in experience in all of it, of course. There's a deeper spiritual meaning here for me as well as to why this stuff happens. And it's serving a purpose to help me grow. And But what I've learned is to just <sighs> see – with trying with codependency what I've realized is that I often try to control what others perceptions are of me to avoid being abandoned right and that's like a huge part of why we develop so many issues around our weight as well like I so much understand now that my whole weight and dieting obsession and the whole obsession with my weight 
had nothing to do with my weight and food. It was all just from protective mechanisms because of the other stuff that was going on, like mainly childhood issues and codependency and stuff, right? And I, and this is what I see in many, many people and their parents were also suffering from the same thing and their parents and their parents and their parents. So it's not just like, it, it, this is like been going on for generations in your family usually. So it's not like we can blame anyone. Like, I love my family. I love my parents. Like, hi, mom. I know you're listening. Um, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is that we, we're, we're here to grow, right? So although I'm not going to be able to be perfect, like it's my journey here on earth to try and overcome certain codependency patterns, right? And to do my best as well to form healthy relationships. Now, what does this have to do with your weight, right? So here's the thing. When we talk about why we have weight issues and then I see people talk about losing the lifestyle and they go it's not a diet it's a lifestyle change it's not a diet it's not a lifestyle change and that's all good and well right but that's not what I'm here to teach you I'm not here to tell you that you should ditch eating chocolate and ditch eating ice cream because that's your poor lifestyle and you're a bad person if you order takeaway, okay? What I'm here to tell you is that shame has been imposed on you and that a lot of the time that shame surrounds food And the guilt and the shame surrounds food. And that's actually coming from toxic shame that's been imposed on you from others and actually has nothing to do with food at all. But we're all just spreading more and more shame and guilt. Instead of getting to the root of these weight issues, we're making it about whether or not you're doing the right thing, the good thing around food. So then the energy of it's not about losing weight, it's about losing the lifestyle is still sending a message of, hey, lose the lifestyle because your lifestyle of eating chocolate, going out with your friends and having certain food or eating bread or having sugar is not helping your weight. And I think that because that's the energy of those words, that's also why I get a lot of hate because they're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I'm actually putting a quote out there that's coming from the dieting industry and saying, hey, let's pull this quote apart because what this is actually saying is still shaming you for having bad foods, quote unquote bad, because I don't believe that we should label foods good and bad because it comes with that feeling of shame and guilt. And you can, once you actually, here's here's the kicker, because what I'm finding is the anti-diet people, they just have their own little cult over there, but they're missing from my perspective, this is only my perspective, okay? Nobody has to agree with me. This is what I believe. That you get, you kind of go to the other extreme instead of seeing that there's nothing wrong with setting an intention to lose weight and following through. What the issue is, is the shame and the guilt that is there and the shame and the guilt is there because there is work to be done on the psyche and moving beyond the childhood trauma 
that causes us to carry toxic shame and guilt because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So unless you're looking at how this whole shame and guilt thing is going on in your life around food and weight, you miss that it's affecting every area of your freaking life and that this is more than just about your weight. Your weight is like the symptom of a deeper issue that's coming from your childhood and that needs to be healed. And then you can freaking do whatever you like with your weight because it'll be very simple and straightforward if you choose to do something about it. And if you don't, then great. But the thing is, is that it's about developing autonomy so that you know that you are in charge of that decision and no one else. Because the whole problem out there is that people are saying, anti-diet, anti-diet, but they're encouraging people to not listen to themselves. And they're still encouraging this codependency and this merging with others where it's like, this is the right thing to do. You should listen to me instead of saying, why don't you develop a relationship with yourself? Why don't you learn to trust yourself enough so that you know Because you are not looking for authoritative figures. You're not a child anymore. You're not seeking out people to tell you what to do. You have autonomy. You know and trust that you are being guided, that you know what's right for you. That if you want to lose weight, you can. If you don't want to lose weight, you don't have to. That's what I want to teach people is to to have confidence. It's not even confidence. This is the thing. It's setting boundaries. It's autonomy. It's learning to have a healthy, functional adult psyche, right? That says, cool, I respect your opinion, but this is my body and I do what I want. And I know that I am healthy that I have, I can, I trust myself to know what to do, right? Instead, people are going, but I'm scared. What if I end up doing this? And what if I end up doing that? And they're not healing the exact thing that's caused those fears, which is you, like it's when in childhood, when our caregivers set, like say, no, don't like, don't do that. That's bad. Don't do that. That's wrong. No, I don't agree with you. Don't feel like that. Oh, I feel sad. Don't feel sad. We lose that connection with ourselves because we say, oh, hang on a second. They're telling me I can't trust myself because I feel this way about this thing. And they're telling me not to feel that. They're telling me that this is bad or wrong. Shame. So then we basically are covered with this cloud of shame and guilt, which I'm learning about in my own life that holy shit, I got over shame and guilt around food, but I still have all this shame and guilt around other areas of my life and who I am and just how I function as a person in relationships and stuff. And it's not about the weight right? And the weight becomes insignificant once you actually realize why, why you're so caught up in what you look like. And that's where the freedom is, is when you actually go, oh my God, when did this start? When did I start getting so obsessed with my weight? And then you go, okay, You heal that and then you go, well, I can still lose weight. I can simultaneously know that if I have thoughts of not loving my body or that I'm restricting or whatever, like there is so much that goes into it, like deprivation mindset, you guys. 
a lot of people are just chronically deprived because they don't understand how to get their emotional needs met. And then they learn to get their needs met through food, which is fine. I get my emotional needs met through food sometimes. I'm still an emotional eater because I don't think that's an issue for me anymore because it's kind of like a spectrum. I still use food (laughs) to meet emotions like I still sometimes get excited just to have a piece of chocolate or whatever like does that make sense so it's it's not it's not like you're condemned forever like oh my god like I'm never like I'm never gonna get to eat chocolate or I'm never gonna get to enjoy food again no that's not what it is but what I'm saying is that I have this different relationship to food now where it's easy it's really easy and it's not hard because I've learned to recondition my emotions surrounding it and the belief systems surrounding it and now it's easy and that ease feels like a higher vibration energy. Why? Because it's not surrounded with lower frequency emotions such as guilt and shame. Okay, so the desire to lose weight is not going to make you feel good when it's based on guilt and shame. And the whole experience of losing weight is surrounded by guilt and shame, which is where majority of people who are at their heaviest weight are experiencing multitudes of guilt and shame. That is basically what they feel 100% of the day, so much so that they don't even know what it's like to not feel that. It's become their set point emotion so that they don't even know it's there. I know this because that was me. That was me. Okay. So when I say lose the lifestyle that got you there, that to me has nothing to do with food. That to me is about your relationship with yourself your emotions, okay? That's the message that I'm sending here is that losing the lifestyle that got you there is not about how many times you've ordered Uber Eats this week. It's not about whether you've eaten pizza and had a few cocktails. It's not about if you put sugar in your coffee. It's not about if you're eating dairy, That is not what this is about. This is about your psyche, the way you relate to life, who you are as a person psychologically as a result of your conditioning that's been imposed on you throughout your childhood and life. That's what the true meaning of losing the lifestyle that got you there means. Because when you heal, the reason why we develop weight and food issues and you tap in to an innate ability to to feel your body and feel it in such a way where it's easy to manage food and your weight and it feels natural and how it was meant to be. That, that's what I want for you because that feels good. That feels easy. That's what it means to me to have lost the lifestyle that got me there. And I'm not perfect at it. I'm not perfect at it because there's no such thing as being perfect. But that's actually part of it is dropping the perfectionism. Whereas... Losing the lifestyle that got you there can sometimes mean to people, don't don't eat bad foods, shame, 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 right? So 
that's that's what I'm here to teach right and it's so funny like when I first started this business I remember it's just popped into my head like how many people were surprised sometimes like that hadn't met me and were like oh like I went out and had a drink with my friend and then I told like a stranger like what I do and they're like oh but you're like you're having a drink or like oh but you're eating like a burger or something like I thought you were a health coach and it's like I'm not a health coach (laughs) I'm not a health coach (laughs) um I'm here to teach people how to change their relationship to food which is completely different okay and we need health coaches we need health coaches. We need all sorts of people out there spreading different messages for different people for different needs. But that's not what I'm here to do. Okay. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. I hope that like kind of gives you a little bit more insight into what to do, you know, what what to actually do about all of this because it's really it's really important to understand why we develop desires to lose weight not just desires to lose weight but why we put on weight why we tend to put on weight why we tend to fluctuate in weight why we tend to develop shame around our bodies and shame around the way we eat and how it's not just showing up around food and weight either it's likely intertwined into all areas of our life where we have toxic shame and guilt meaning it's not a healthy response and it's coming from childhood and like I said other issues codependency attachment abandonment stuff like there's so much to learn you guys (laughs) okay anyway you guys I love you guys and I will see you again soon in the next episode bye thank you so much for tuning in today if you loved this episode I'd love for you to leave me an iTunes review Don't forget to follow this podcast for more uplifting teachings to come. For more tips, inspiration and teachings, come follow me on Instagram at NoDietBabe or check out my website, NoDietBabe.com. Until I see you next time, babes, lots of love.